Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an image slideshow in Adobe Premiere Pro 2023. Okay, so I've got this blank project set up in Premiere Pro. To make sure you can see exactly the same layer as I have, go to Windows Workspace and then click All Panels. So you should see something similar to this. Down here you've got the media pool, right? The media bin here. So just go ahead and drag and drop loads of images. I've only got a few in here, like about eight images. Uh, but just drag and drop them into here. It doesn't really matter too much what resolution they are, but they should really be bigger than HD resolution. So bigger than 1920 by 1080. As long as your images are larger than that, then you shouldn't have too much of a problem in terms of like pixelation or anything like this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this option here, list view. So there's a icon view and then there's list view. So I'm going to set it into list view. Then I can right click at the bottom here, go to new, and I'm going to create a color map. So this color map is basically going to be the default width and height of our video content or the slide animation that we're going to create in here. If you want to create one at HD resolution, you can set the HD resolution here. But I'm going to stick with 1080p, so it's going to be 1920, 1920 by 1080p resolution, right? You can leave it at 25 frames a second or increase it to 30 frames, whatever you choose to do so. But I'm going to leave it at 25 frames and click OK. And it doesn't really matter what color it is. But if you want to choose a different background color, you can, but it shouldn't really matter because you're going to um, really, um, uh, fading and that these images anyway so you won't really see this background too much so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and just leave it on black and then we just call this color map black so the reason why we created this color map this one right at the very top is we can now drag and drop it on the timeline and the Premiere Pro will inherit the width and height for the default size so that's why you, why you create it that way there are other ways to do this but this is such a quick way to do it and it's just an easy way to do it right so anything that we add to Premiere Pro is always going to be 1920 by 1080. That's going to be the resolution of the output video, right? Regardless if it's still images or not. So we can go ahead and click on this color map on the timeline and actually delete it. We don't need it. And we can go back to the thumbnail view where we can see the little thumbnails. And we can drag and drop these images. So let's take the first one. And when we drag and drop it on the timeline, as default, this image is five seconds long right you can see it across the timeline here five seconds you can see five seconds here so regardless of what image we drag and drop if we drag and drop the next one and put it side by side each image we drop is going to be five seconds right so the, the quicker way to reduce the duration if you don't want it to be five seconds you can go ahead and drag all of your images onto the timeline so that's what i would normally do first right just drag them all onto the timeline in theory we should be able to hold down our shift key multi select them and just drag them all in one go like this something like this let's drag it up here for a minute and we can just drag it to the side here right so we've got all the video or all the images in sequence they're not necessarily in sequence we've got eagles and so forth so we're going to sort out the resolutions in a minute because you can see they're quite zoomed in and they're not really looking quite right but we'll fix that in a minute Okay, so for each one of these images that we've dragged onto the timeline, if you want to reduce the duration between them, because right now each one lasts five seconds, the quick way to do that is to select all of them, right click on them, and then go to speed and duration here. And when you click on speed and duration, you can set the time that you want each one of those images to display. So you may want to display at four seconds each, but you've got to remember that you're going to probably put a transition, some sort of fade or something in between each image. So you want to leave a bit of space for that fade to happen normally it takes about one second for that transition to happen so i think four seconds should be suffice so if we go ahead and click ok all of these will be set to four seconds but we've got these gaps in between each one all of the content is already selected right or you can just left click and drag with your mouse or you can press ctrl a to select all of them you can go to clip uh, sorry go to sequence and then close gap and that will close all of the gaps and so now each one of these images is four seconds in total duration okay so each picture that we dragged into premiere pro was quite large so when we drag these images into premiere pro the resolution of them is much higher than the actual video content that we're trying to target right we're trying to target 1920 by 1080 but these images are much much larger so to fix that we can select all of them for now right click on them and then scale to frame size here and when we click scale to frame size Premiere Pro will try to fit the images as best as it can inside the realms of 1920 by 1080 or whatever resolution that you created. So if we scrub across this timeline, 
we can see that the image is just switched like this and we've got a few problems here we've got some like blank gaps down the sides so you can see these blank spaces down the side here we don't really want that if you edited all of these images first in photoshop and you made them all 1920 by 1080 you wouldn't have that problem but i've kind of just downloaded these images and just drag and drop them um, basically into Premiere Pro. So we can fix that by going to the first image. We can see this one's pretty good, right? There's no blank spaces down the sides or the top. So the first image kind of taken care of itself, but this one here, you can see these gaps down the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click to deselect all of the content here. Then I can click on that specific picture and then make sure you go to Windows and make sure you go to Effects Controls here, Effects Controls. So when you click on Effects Controls, you can start to manipulate. So if you go to Motion here, this Motion drop down, you can see the position, so you can change its position of this image. You can also change its scale. So I'm gonna scale it in a bit, just to get rid of those blank gaps down the side. Scale it in. So I'm gonna set it to like 123. Uh, and then I wanna move it down. So this one allow me to move the image down a little bit, right? here so we can move the image and now we can see what it looks like right and now you haven't got those gaps down the side so we need to repeat that for all of these images so we can click on this next image we can go ahead and scale it in and we can maybe move it down a little bit as well you can move it up a little bit it's up to you we just repeat that for all of the images whenever you click on a picture you need to move this cursor across to the timeline so that this blue cursor is directly over the image then you'll see the image in here and then you can manipulate it a lot easier over here so with the tiger we're going to zoom in and then i want to bring that down so you can see the top of the head something like this i think will be good i think this one's actually on a black background right so we could zoom right out maybe to something like this we can move the image over to the left and we could see more of this this tiger let's move it up a little bit let's see how far we can move it up Let's move it up to around here and I think we can scale it in a little bit and move it to the right to something like this. So it kind of sits in this corner because it already had a black background so we can get away with that one. Let's move across the timeline. We can see this tiger. We've got these little blank gaps down the side so we're just going to zoom in a little bit and maybe shift it to the left a little bit and that should be pretty good. We'll move to this image. Let's click it. It's of this snake. I think the snake is pretty good. I don't think we really need to do anything with that one. You can see there's no gaps at the top, there's nothing at the bottom, and the sides look fine. Let's move to the next picture. This one, you've got the gaps down the side. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Zoom in. And then we're going to move that image up as much as we can to something like this. And then the final images of this gorilla I've kind of got, uh, let's see. We've got this gorilla here, and we've got one at the end. So what I'll do is grab all of these drag them to the side and then take this end one or this gorilla and put it here and then just drag these back then we've got two gorillas like side by side and we've got two tigers two snakes and then we've got two eagles at the beginning let's just look at this very last image this looks all okay it's just this gorilla here we need to fix now it was originally was at the end but we moved it here so we can just zoom in on this one let's just zoom in and then we'll bring it down a little bit let's try and move it to the side a bit to about here I think that's pretty good. So all of our images now cover the full canvas size of 1920 by 1080. So we won't have any blank gaps at the top or at the bottom. Okay, we've got kind of two options now. The first option is that we've got all of these images and we can just add transitions between them. So let me show you that quickly, but I think afterwards I'm gonna show you how to animate these pictures so we can make our slideshow a bit more dramatic and make it a bit more presentable. But if you just wanna have still images, you can go over to transitions, you can click on uh, cross dissolve or any of these different options here, right? You can do like slides and swipes and loads of different things in here. You can do like pinwheels and zoom. So if you drag one of these um, normally I drag them at the beginning of each media clip so I drag, if I drag it here and then click play you can hit the spacebar to um, to play this you'll see like the pinwheel right that transition between the two video clips but I prefer to just use cross dissolve so I'm going to drag the cross dissolve here and it will replace the other one and they'll just fade in and fade in between so you can go ahead and just keep dragging the cross dissolve across all of your your images like this just going to show you a couple and we should really drag one at the very beginning because if we drag one at the beginning we have a black frame and then this one will fade in we'll wait three or four seconds and then it's going to fade into the next one then we'll wait a few more seconds and then it will fade into the next one and so forth and you can just add all of your cross transitions um like this but you know 
it's not the most exciting, is it? Um, we can do better than that. So we can click on these cross transitions. If I zoom in a little bit here. Uh, we can click on these specific cross transitions here and we can delete them and then we can go ahead and start animating these images directly in Premiere Pro um, to add a bit more movement and you know, make it a bit more dynamic. So to do that, we should do the animations first and then we should add the cross dissolves after just to make sure we do this the right way. So if we just save this work for a minute, make sure you go to Windows Workspace and click All Panels so you see exactly what I see and then make sure you go to the effects controls here so there's all these different options at the cross here if you can't see effects controls click on this little drop down option here and select effects controls or go to window and select it from here so in here you can see that we've got the position and the scale and we we manipulated not this first one but some of these other ones we changed the settings here but we can also use those same settings to animate the content so we always click on this stopwatch here and that adds a little keyframe here it's a little bit hard to see maybe we can zoom let's just drag this here let me try and drag this handle. You can't really see it too well, but there's a little keyframe right here. It's a bit hard to see. Uh, then we can click one on scale, and then we can click one on rotation. So really, we've got three different keyframes here: one for the scale, one for the position, and one for the rotation. Now we want to drag this handle all the way to the end. And when we drag it all the way to the very, very end, we'll see the picture of the eagle. So what we need to do is click on this little blue handle here. You can see this little blue handle, the timeline cursor, and then press the left arrow key on your keyboard, the left arrow key. And that takes us back one frame, and it takes us to the very last frame of this eagle yeah, picture. Then we can go ahead and click this little, um, this little button here, this add uh, keyframe button here. And that will add a keyframe at the very end. So now we've got one at the very beginning and one at the very end. So if we zoom out a little bit here, you can see the ones at the beginning here and now you can see the ones at the end here. So we want to get all the way to the beginning of the timeline or this, this clip here. To do that, we can just click any one of these three little arrows here. And that just moves us back to the first keyframe. Any one we click will always bring us back to the first keyframe here. Now we can decide what do we want to do with this bird. We want to animate in some way, right? So we might zoom in and zoom out, we might rotate it, we might change its scale in its position. So first thing I might do is um, I want to rotate it first. So in the rotation, I'm just going to rotate this image slightly. And now you can see the blank, the black sections around the edge, right? So I want to rotate it that much. I just want to rotate it just a small amount, like three degrees or something like this, a very small amount. But then I want to scale in as well. I want to scale it in. So now when we grab this blue handle, the bird is kind of rotating slightly and scaling at the same time. You can see it's a bit more, a bit more dynamic now, right? But then we can also change its position as well. So we can go back to the beginning of the timeline and maybe we can move the bird down a little bit and maybe we can move it in slightly. And now when we see this image, it's moving, it's got some movement to it, right? It's not very static, it's got some movement. So what we can do is click on position, position here, click on the text position, hold down the shift key and click on scale then holding down the shift key click on rotation and that will select all of these keyframes can you see they're all being selected then we can just go ahead and right click on it go to the uh, temporal inter interpolation here and select bezier or you can select auto bezier but i'm just going to select bezier and that will add a bit of gradual it will kind of slow down uh towards the end it will slow down gradually right so it won't just be a constant um uh, speed here it will start to gradually slow down towards the end of the uh, this uh, this image here you can see it's slowing down right towards the end that's what Bezier does right think of it as a straight line and all of a sudden it starts to go up and it's slowing down that's what it looks like so we can repeat that same process one thing I'm not sure about is if I can copy these keyframes copy them and let's click on this video clip or this image I'm not sure if you can yeah I think you can you can just copy uh, from one keyframe to the other, which is, well, one one clip to the other clip, right? We just copied it literally across, um, which is good. So that just saves us having to do a bit of work. So what I've done is I went into here, hold down the shift key, click on position, click on that text position, hold down the shift key, click on scale, and then click on rotation. Then right click on these keyframes, copy them. And then you can go to the next video clip or the next picture, should I say. Let's just delete these keyframes. So you can click on this picture here and then you can go to the beginning of the timeline 
then you can just right click here and then paste and you'll paste in those same keyframes from the first one to the second one that just saves you having to add all the keyframes at the end in the beginning because these two images are of the same duration you don't need to really worry about where the keyframe uh, the, the, these keyframes are positioned right because it's the same duration now with this one there's some problems here so when we drag on the timeline uh, we can see at the end here we zoomed that too much right so what we can do is click on this very end keyframe for the scale. Let's click on the scale one and let's scale it in. So what, what do we want the end picture to look like or the end element of this, um, this, this transition here? So it's going to look like this at the very end, which is fine. I think maybe what we do is um, let's just click on this arrow that takes us to the very last keyframes. And let's bring the bird down a little bit. It's a bit too high up, right? I think we can maybe move it in a bit as well so we can see more of it now um, and we don't really want it to rotate so the rotation let's go to the very first keyframe we can maybe maybe we can have a small amount of rotation like a very small amount and let's see if we can scale it in a little bit just a small amount so now when we go back and click play this one will animate and then this one's animating as well Right, then you can just go and repeat that for all of the different uh, image clips and add your transitions and really you're animating these still images and put, bring in a bit of life to them, let's say. So let's try and do that quickly for the rest of them. Let's press Control A. If we press, if we click here, click on this image, press Control A, that will select all the keyframes. We're going to right click, copy them, go to the next image, this one, go to the beginning of the timeline here and press Control V to paste. And then we can see roughly what it looks like. It's not looking too great. So what we can do is go ahead and uh, reset the parameter. Just reset them all. We can click this little um, this little uh, sort of reset button option here for all the keyframes, right? Then we can go to the um, end keyframes here, and we can also reset those as well. So we just go ahead and reset them all. Then we can manipulate this directly for this picture specifically so we can scale it in and we might just leave it like this i think this is pretty good maybe we'll move it down slightly then we can go to our beginning keyframes let's go right to the beginning here and then on this first keyframe we will zoom in again let's just make sure everything's working here we can see it's kind of zooming in doing its thing and we can change its position so let's move it down slightly to maybe here let's see what that looks like that looks pretty good and then we want to set some maybe rotation maybe around this sort of angle something like this but then we need to close this gap here so we can do that by scaling in a little bit more so let's just check that like this right so we're just moving these images like they're just moving images let's press Control a that will select all of the keyframes in here Control and a we can right click Actually, let's right click can't do that let's click position hold down the shift key and click all of these let's try and right click interpolation here and then select it to bezier and now we've got three of the images animated the first three And then you can just go ahead and repeat that process for the rest of them. Let's just show you a couple of other things that we can do, right? So let's click on this picture. It has no keyframes. We didn't copy and paste any across. Let's go to the very beginning. I'm going to insert a position, scale, and rotation keyframes here. I'm going to go to the middle of the, of the timeline here, this purple section across here. I'm going to roughly go to the middle and then also set a uh, keyframe here for the position, rotation, and scale. And then I want to go to the very end and then go back one keyframe to make sure I'm on this very last keyframe of this image and then add a image position scale and rotation. So now we've got actually two sets of keyframes, we've got three sets of keyframes, right? So if we go back to the very beginning, we can go ahead and manipulate this. So let's say we scale it in more and I'm going to move it to the right a little bit and bring it down a little bit. and let's just give it a small amount of rotation this way so between these keyframes and these keyframes it's going to animate like this right 
and then what we could do is go to the end keyframes and the end keyframes look exactly like the uh, these keyframes here right now because we didn't change anything on the middle ones or the end ones yet so on the end ones I'm going to zoom back in I want to go to the bring it down a little bit more go to the right a little bit and this time I want to rotate it slightly the other direction so what will happen let's see if it's going to go this way and then rotate the other way like this so then we should be able to click position hold down the shift key click scale and then rotation then right click here and then go to Bezier. so if we check it now you can see this animation right but now we've set we set two sets of keyframes so we can animate between these two points and animate between these two points here on the keyframes so we've got some other images here with these ones i'll just do something nice and simple uh, just to speed this up so we can finish off this tutorial i'm just going to add a scale keyframe only and maybe just a rotation one for the minute rotation and then we'll go to the very end we'll go back one keyframe add the keyframes here as well we'll go to the beginning i'm just going to rotate this ever so slightly let's rotate it this way uh, this way and then let's just scale it in a little bit so we just have a really simple um, animation here right simple one we'll click scale and then we'll hold down the shift key and click rotation right click on the keyframes and set it to bezier that one's done let's go to the next one and we'll go to the beginning we'll click um, on the position and rotation and scale and then we'll go to the very end then we'll use the left mouse button on the keyboard sorry the left arrow key on the keyboard and to go back one frame so we're on the very last frame of this this uh, picture of this tiger then we'll add the three keyframes here we'll go back to the beginning i want to zoom in a little bit i want to shift it to the left a little bit and i want to give it a tiny bit of rotation this way something simple and then we can see that one rotating like this let's go ahead and click on position the text position hold down the shift key click on scale and then click on rotation then just right click here and go to bezier and then we've got two more left so let's finish it off We've got the snake. Let's go ahead and put in a position, scale, and rotation. And then we'll go to the very end. We'll go back a frame and we'll put the position, scale, and rotation. Let's go back to the beginning. And with this one, just to show you, you don't really need to do this. Maybe there is an option to do opacity, so like how much transparency it has as well so normally i wouldn't do that because you're going to do like a crossfade so you're going to see that transparency when you do the crossfade but with transparency or opacity let's say let's click on it and that just allows you to change its opacity here can you see so as you drag it you can fade it in and out here manually you could actually do a manual fade as well if you wanted to i'm going to get rid of that because i don't really want that i'm just going to remove the keyframe here and we just focus on the position so the position let's scale it in a little bit first I want to bring it down a little bit and then bring it to the side just kind of zoomed in a little bit more and then that was the uh, scale and position and then i want to do rotation small amount of rotation let's do this do, do it like this and then we've got this one animated like this so we can click on position hold down the shift key to select the rest of them the scale and the rotation and then you can right click and then set it to bezier We've got one left so let's click on this picture we'll go to the beginning we'll click position and scale and rotation and then we'll drag it to the end and then we'll go back one frame and then we'll go to add keyframes for all of these let's go back to the beginning and then with this one we want to zoom in a little bit let's bring it up and we'll give it a slight rotation let's zoom in a little bit more let's move it to the side here something like this and I think that should be fine All right so now we've got some movement in our images rather than them being very very still and static we've got some nice sort of movement uh, in our slide animation let's save this work now we can go back to our transitions I'm going to use the simple cross dissolve you can experiment with these other transitions if you like but I'm going to cross dissolve at the beginning and then I'm going to add a cross dissolve at the beginning of every single um, uh image here right and i'm pretty sure there is a quicker way to add this transition to all of them 
I just can't remember how to do it off the top of my head right now. But it's not that many, so it shouldn't matter too much. So let's just do that. Let's do that one. Then we want to add one here. And then we want to add one at the very, very end. Uh, let's see at the end of this clip here. So that way at the very beginning, we're going to start on a black frame. And if you don't want it to be black, imagine you want it to be red or green or blue or some other color. You can actually click on um, <clears throat> you can click on the uh, this option here to see the the list view. Then you can right click, create a new item, and create a new color map. And you can create any color map you want. You can just click OK, and then we can make it maybe a red color. Click OK, and then we just call it color map red. And then you can drag and drop that. Really, you need to take everything on this timeline. So you press Shift A to select all and drag it up one. Then the red color mat you can put underneath. And now you'll have red fading over, right? Like this. Because this is um, transparency here. This crossfade is going to be transparency, right? So it's going to fade like this. So if you want to start off on a red frame, you can. But if you delete that color mat, it will just be black at the beginning. So I think black is fine if we click play. We can kind of see what's going on here. We've got some movement in our images now. They're not very static. They're moving around. Obviously, you can spend a bit more time adjusting this and making it a bit more professional and tidy it up. But it's not too bad for the time that we spent on it. And this could be pictures from your party. This could be pictures from a business event. It could be photography that you're doing. It could be for anything, right? Anything that you want. If you want to animate the content, you can do it this way in Premiere Pro. It's very easy and we're not using any video content. It's just pure um, images. So let's go back to the very beginning of the timeline. Let's just save this work and go to File and then go to Export Media. And we can export this. So if you want to upload it to YouTube or if you want to create a HD quality uh, resolution, so you can either select YouTube 1080p Full HD or just high quality 1080p Full HD. I'm just going to leave it on YouTube for now. That's the default setting I have. And go ahead and click the Export button here. And we should really give it a better name. So let's just call this um, <clears throat> any going to call it animal slideshow v1 and we'll click export and it should literally take seconds to export it's got no audio so it doesn't have to do it you could put some nice music in there as well on the timeline down here you could put some music and if we open up this folder then we have our little slideshow let's just have a quick look so here you can see the slideshow playing it's all video content it's good resolution good quality um, and just make sure that the images that you drag and drop into Premiere Pro are of high resolution, right? So you want to make sure your width and height of images are greater than 1920 by 1080. Because then if you zoom in into content, you're not going to see pixelation um, when you drag and drop your pictures. So all these images, I downloaded them from Unsplash or from Pexel's website. You can go ahead and grab similar images. And there you go. It's just going to loop around. So that's pretty cool. I think that worked out pretty well. So let's just open up Premiere Pro. We'll go ahead and save this work. Let's minimize this. That's the end of this video tutorial showing you how to create an image slideshow in Adobe Premiere Pro 2023. If you'd like to learn more about Adobe Premiere Pro 2023, don't forget to check out my beginner's tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.